what I've got here are some feathers that have been willingly given to me by my pet parrot and what I'm going to do is select the ones with the thickest tips. The best feathers to use are goose feathers or swan feathers if you've got swans uh, near you have a walk around and see if they've given up their feathers willingly. So you start off uh, with your feather like this and then what you need to do is make a cut across the top and by doing that you get a feather with a square blunted end. Then the next thing you need to do is cut about an inch back across and down through your feather so you're cutting a wedge out of it. Then what your pen will look like is a feather with a sloping end like that. And then when you've done that, the next thing you do is a steep scoop out of the end of that. And that will leave you with a shape that looks a bit like that. I'm not terribly good at drawing. And then if you turn that feather around, it will look a little bit like that. And then the next thing you need to do is make a slit right down the center. Without that slit, the ink will not be able to suck up into the pen and, and you won't be able to draw with it. Also, what I do is I cut a little bit of a, a notch sideways so that when I'm writing with the pen, it gives it that um, calligraphy look. So, you know, the thick and thin lines. I'll, re I'll bring this back in a bit, but we'll get on with making. The only reason I've done this drawing is that I'm worried that you won't be able to see what I'm doing under this lamp. So what I've got here is a really, really sharp craft knife and a pair of nail clippers here. The first thing I'm going to do is see where, where it sits. And I think I want to hold the pen there, but I want to get rid of some of these barbs that are sort of interfering with the where it's being held in my hand. So I'm just going to cut some of those off. I'm just going to slice those off. Same on that side. Just scraping all those fluffy bits off as well. Make sure when you're using your knife that you're always using it away from your body. You don't want to cut your fingers. And then you'll notice there's like a waxy layer on the outside of the feather. And what I do is I just get a little bit of sandpaper and just rub that off. Some people use like their nail to scrape it off, but I prefer to just sand it down with a little bit of sandpaper. The, the, the shaft of the feather is very much like your nail. It's made of keratin, so it's got that feel of a nail. There we go. So that's looking nice and smooth now. That feels better. That feels like I can write without it interfering with my hand. So what I'm going to do now is that first cut. I'm going to use these nail clippers just to go across. Watch your eyes when you do that. And now I'm going to do that second cut straight down. So just hold it again. That's where it wants to naturally be. So I'm going to do the cut underneath. So I'm going to turn it over. And with my knife, using it away from my body, about an inch back, just going to make a slight angled cut. There we go. So that's the first cut. Inside, there's a membrane. And I've got a crochet hook here, so I'm just going to lift that membrane out. There it is. What can you see? It's like a papery... Don't know, perhaps like a cuticle. Just check there's no more. Oh, there's some more up there, I think. 
I've got a little crochet hook here but you can use a cocktail stick or anything else pointy that's it and then the next thing I'm going to do is that scooped out stage there so I'm going to scoop from the side very slowly and carefully little cuts At this stage, I've often messed up and had to start again. So practice on an, a not so good feather first. I don't know if you can see that very well. So we've gone slope down and then I've made a much deeper cut. Let's get that a little bit more level. There we go. And then the next thing I'm going to do is right in the centre of the nib is make a line. And this is the line that will suck the ink up. There we go. So I'm just going to have a little go at shaping that nib a bit more. So I've got it nice and even. And then finally, with the clippers, I'm going to put it on a tiny slight angle and there we have our quill for writing. Let's have a go and see if it works. So I've got here, uh, this is ink from tea, that I've, this is the ink from the beetroot, this is the turmeric and that's the oat gall ink there. Let's start with the beetroot. I love this ink well, so it's got a little uh, notch in it and you can lay your pen on the side of it. So whoever made that, put some thought into it. So I'm just going to dip the pen in the ink, wait for it to suck up the feather. Oh look, that's loaded up lovely. So can you see how the ink's gone up the feather? And now we can use it to draw with. This is a lovely one. The harder you press, the more ink comes out and the lighter you hold it, the less. So you can kind of control the flow of the ink depending on how much you press down. That's a good pen. I like that. Now some, in ancient days, they used to, can you see how it's quite blobby there? They used to get uh, sand, put sand over it and then the, uh, that, that would take up the excess ink, but I'm just going to use a little bit of tissue here just to suck up the excess ink. 